Estimado presidente Biden, Biden. Amigas, amigos. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, friends, de all. La delegación from del the gobierno delegation de Estados Unidos of the United States government. Nos da mucho gusto We're so happy tener esta reunión have this meeting, bilateral. This bilateral meeting estar con ustedes with you, to be here with you today. que and tienen una it has vinculación con nosotros close link with the, us eh, más allá more over and beyond uh, lo estratégico the strategic de la part of this even our big neighbors es una this relación. is a relationship uh, which is fraternal relationship of friendship between our two peoples. Estimado Presidente Biden, Dear President Biden, tengo la certeza I am certain que es that usted un you are humanista a humanistic president, a visionary president, y que hay and that there are conditions that could really be better to initiate a new policy of integration, economic, and social, of economic social integration, in Mr. President, in our continent. El tratado comercial USMCA, México, y Unidos, Mexico, the United States, and Canada, it has shown to be a valuable instrument to consolidate nuestros procesos productivos, aprovechando Taking el gran potencial que representa that, uh, el mercado interno the domestic market en nuestra región. In our region. Sin embargo, en nuestros puertos in our del Pacífico, of the Pacific, aún sigue creciendo el arribo de barcos repletos de mercancías procedentes de Asia. Asia. Y la pregunta and que nos hacemos es la siguiente. Is the following. No podríamos producir we en América lo que consumimos. And couldn't we produce in America what we consume? That's what we're asking. Claro que sí. Of course we could. Es asunto de definición y de planear and planning as well together planning together desarrollo futuro. joint future development planning unirnos y being united en partnering vale in america amounts to consolidating definitely la región más importante the most important region del mundo. of the world las ventajas son muchas. We have so many advantages for that. Entre otras, Among them, for instance, contamos con we fuerza de trabajo have joven young labor force, creativa, creative labor forces, con well, desarrollo tecnológico, with technological development, y con una gran riqueza and also with great wealth natural, of natural resources. Las distancias Distances entre between our countries, among our countries, allow us to save in terms of transportation, and we also have enough uh, demand in our marketplaces. El consumo per capita, per capita de consumption of America is 18,100 dólares anuales. Que el de Asia es de a year in Asia is four thousand four hundred dollars in Asia. No obstante, nonetheless, la integración productiva que proponemos productive integration we're now proposing contar con el respaldo de inversión pública y privada para el bienestar for the well -being de todos los pueblos de América, peoples of America, sin excluir without excluding a nadie. Anyone. Recordemos que Let el 13 us remember de marzo March 13th, de 1961, 1961 el presidente John F. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy proposed en la Casa and informed ante through the White House, and he was there Latina talking to ambassadors Caribe, of Latin America and the Caribbean, plan the plan Alianza known as Alliance for Progress. En ese entonces, At that Unidos time, the United States invested in 10 years' time $10 billion. 
at today's prices, that would be $82 billion dollars for the benefit of the peoples of Latin America and the Caribbean. Nonetheless, this has been the only important thing, really, that has been done in terms of cooperation for development in our continent in more than half a century. Therefore, I hold that uh, this is the moment for us to determine to do away with this abandonment, uh, this disdain, and this forgetfulness for Latin America and the Caribbean which is opposed to the policy of the good neighborhood, of the titan, of freedom and liberty, FDR Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And starting with you, because there would be no other leader that could implement this enterprise, beginning with you, to start a new stage with you, Mr. President, of the nations and the peoples of the continent as of respect and mutual aid and help and assistance. President Biden, you hold the key in your hand to open and to substantially improve the relationship among all the countries of the American continent. I know this is a complex, uh, polemical, controversial initiative. I am very much aware of the fact that its implementation implies uh, many difficulties. But I also believe that there's no better path to guarantee uh, the prosperous, well-being, peaceful, and fair and just well-being and future of our peoples, our fellow men, our fellow women, our compatriots, and also all the peoples of the continent and the future and future generations as well. So my proposal, President Biden, is to it's an integral proposal. It implies consolidating ourselves as an economic region in the world, strengthening our fraternal relationship in the American continent, respecting our differences, our sovereignties, and uh, so that no one is left behind. And so that all of us together, we can start seeking the beautiful utopia of freedom, of liberty, equality, and true democracy. There's many of us. There are many of us who haven't stopped dreaming in this fair, fraternal, just integration among all the peoples and countries of our continent. Because as Simon Bolivar said, the liberator, if the sky grants us the desire of the United America, this continent could be called, this United America could be called the queen of nations and the mother of the republics. Welcome, welcome. This is your home. Make yourself at home. This is your home, President Biden. You are our friend. And the U.S. people are also our friends. We are neighbor countries, and we are sister countries and peoples. Thank you. Working now, okay, thank you. Well, Mr. President, my friend, it's good to be with you again on the 10th North American Leaders Summit in Mexico City. Last month, we celebrated 200 years of bilateral relations with Mexico. And looking back on our shared history, it's clear that the stronger and safer we both are is when we stand together, we work together. Mexico is a true partner, and when we work together in common values and mutual respect, nothing much is beyond our reach. 
So today, uh, we're going to discuss how we can further deepen that relationship, not only in Mexico, but the Western Hemisphere. This includes strengthening our supply chains to make the hemisphere even more competitive. We're also going to discuss our shared security, including our joint action to address the, the plague of fentanyl, which has killed 100,000 Americans so far, and how we can tackle, tackle irregular migration, which I think we're well on our way to doing. Above all, we both committed to pursuing a better future, one grounded on peace and prosperity for all of our people. So, Mr. President, this afternoon uh, and the years ahead, I look forward to building that better future. And I might add, just uh, in the last 15 years, we've spent billions of dollars in the hemisphere, tens of billions of dollars in the hemisphere. And, uh, and we, uh, what we have to do is what you've done, and I can't compliment you on it, we have to continue to support and build democratic institutions in the hemisphere. One of the things I was able to do at the G7 is get the G7 to agree that we would have a multi, multi-billion dollar project for infrastructure for the Western Hemisphere, for Latin America, and for Africa, both. Um, so there's much we can do, much we have to talk about, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to being able to do it because I'm confident. I'm confident we can get it done. And I'm confident we're at one of those moments of a real change in the direction. The last fundamental change that occurred in world politics was the end of World War II post-Cold War era. We're in a totally different place now, totally different place. We're at one of those inflection points. But what we do in the next several years is going to determine what the world looks like for the next two, three, four decades. And that's what we have an opportunity to do, and I think we're in a good position to do it. And uh, But having said that, uh, you know, the United States provides more foreign aid than every other country just about combined in the world. Uh, to uh, not just the hemisphere, but around the world. Unfortunately, our responsibility just doesn't end in the Western Hemisphere. It's in uh, Central Europe, it's in Asia, it's in the Middle East, it's in Africa, it's in South West Asia. And so uh, it's, uh, it's not, I wish we could just have one focus, only one focus. We have multiple foci, and so that's what we have to work on, and I'm confident we can do a great deal more in tandem with one another. So thank you for having us, and I look forward to our discussion.